Hello, my little goblins. We're here with the top five games of the week again, and this time we're leading it off with Wotan, who just he's playing prank kids, and he just won a tournament this Friday. So, congrats to you. Uh, pretty awesome. Our tournaments are hosted at 6 p.m. Eastern on Fridays, and the tr the rules always change from week to week. The winner of the tournament usually decides the rules for the next tournament. So join our Discord. The link is down below. That will uh, let you know if you go to the tournament rules discussions. You can find out what the next rule set is if you want to join. It's pretty fun though. Uh, so yeah, he's playing Prank Kids, and uh, this game particularly is good. He's playing against Big Chungus, who is someone who is in our Discord. He thought the game was really good, so he wanted to just showcase the deck. Uh, it's got some different stuff going for it. Um, but yeah, Prank Kids uh, has, seen, has seen better days, I will say. Uh, considering they have... Uh, I think, didn't Meow go to one? Am I crazy? I think Meow went to one. Yeah, Meow, Meow's at one. So that, that's probably the big reason the deck got. That was a big hit on the deck. Um... So he's just doing the combo here, adds polymerization. So you normally, yep, he's doing exactly what you're supposed to do. You add both cards. So now what this does is if he does anything, uh, he can cast his quick play spell to go into Battle Butler, which can blow up the field. Uh, he's, the opponent's playing Magicians. He's playing Purple Magician right here. Goes into Battle. He's going to trade here. He can't destroy. If you guys are wondering why he didn't, oh, I didn't just destroy it. He actually can't destroy it. Uh, and the reason why he can't destroy it is because Bow Wow prevents cards from being destroyed, uh, but, uh, except for battle. So here he's going to go for the fusion. And I think he was doing this on end step. Yeah, he's doing this at end step. That's why the, uh, which is actually good because the call by can't hit anything. Probably wouldn't want to use call by in this anyway. Probably would use call by on like if you went to doodle do or something like that. Um, but yeah, so, so this is some of the new tech that he was running. Let's see some of the new tech he was running. So he's going to go to doodle do. So he put polymerization in the, in, in the deck for a reason. And here comes the call by. He's going to cross out the call by. Better lucky than good. Uh, he adds these cards back. Then polymerization. Boom. He goes into Guardian Chimera. Card activates. And then he's going to activate time. So he pops up both. Damn. So many triggers happening. Boom. 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 So Guardian Chimera is really, really the, the the big change that he had. Now he finally goes into Meow, and then he burns him out with the uh, Lampsies. So yeah, that was a uh, game number five for top five plays of the week, and we're gonna go to the next ones. It's just gonna get spicier from here. That one might have been, like, lukewarm. Now we're going to go to the spice, the real spice. Hello, we're here with uh, play of the game game of the week, number four. Uh, we got Spiffy. He actually has, this is a, this is when they were doing that um, a tournament, the uh, the event. The, one of the dual events, the most recent one, I think. But yeah, so he's playing the DDD Mirror. And, uh... It gets a little bit spicy here. So he goes into Oracle King here. And then he goes into Gilgamesh. He's going to get Effect Veilard on Gilgamesh. And then... I believe he probably is going to activate DD Crow on... Yeah, so he activates DD Crow on Lambda, I believe. Right here. So when Lambda activates his ability, he's going to snipe it with the DD Crow, which is absolutely devastating. Hand traps were limited for this event. Like, I don't think you could you could play Maxi and stuff. 
So this this game gets gets this game gets crazy. So we're, we're going right into the dudes do, uh, dudes machina. He plays one for one. Plays Kepler. Kepler's getting negated. Sucked him up. Or get sucked up. Not negated, sorry. He's gonna activate contract. Contract's gonna add Griffin. He's playing around the suck. Right now. Goes into Wave King. Goes into Own Machine. But then he goes into the Seven Sins. Guess you didn't see that coming. Kills the Deuce Machina. And then he goes into a fusion into his own arc, King Arc. And then he goes into another Deuce Machina. This is getting a little crazy, if you ask me. Okay, so let's see what he does. He top decks Piri Map, which he goes into Kepler. Kind of, gonna be kind of rough for Spiffy, Spiffy here. We go for the Negate, or the Suck. He still gets his contract. He's gonna go into his own Machina. Goes into his own contract. Yeah, I know this is getting a little confusing here. He grabs this card. Okay, this is gonna be nuts. We're gonna fast forward through this a little. He goes into Gilgamesh. Summons. So he's actually building a crazy board. But the big thing is he's at a thousand life points. Right? Yeah, it, it, like he has to be able to deal with number seventy-seven, and if you guys know what this card does, it can use its material. It's, think of it as almost a uh, Dengirsu, except only for itself. You can use its material anytime it's about to be destroyed to protect it from being destroyed. So, so he has one monster on the field. This guy tries to kill it. Boom, takes five k, but he's still alive. Still alive. Special summons. And he just attacks for game. Sometimes it's simple, sometimes it's not. I thought that was a really funny game, so that is why it is part of the top five games of the week. Hello, we're here with game number three, and this time we got Leon. Also, he made his name into Zoid Goblin 2, which is kind of funny. Uh, and yeah, so this is good. This is this game is introduced because it is very funny uh, This person is going for the crooked cook play So he has the invincible crooked cook Now the problem is Leon does not have uh, underworld goddesses that he does also does not run kaiju But he was able to find an interesting way to actually win the match and you guys are going to end up seeing. We're actually going to fast forward through this. Uh, it's just really funny. So he ends up. He goes into. Long Xion Xi or whatever. This is all fine. So the, his whole strategy here. Was actually to just. Keep spamming Long Yan To burn out his opponent. Now you might say, well, that's no way the opponent will let him do that. And I would say that sounds like it would be something really stupid for someone to let happen. Uh, but remember, and you might be saying, how is he actually going to do it? Well, it's actually kind of simple. Like board space wise, all he has to do is keep sending using um, Baron de Fleur's second ability and sending it back to the extra deck. And resurrecting Long Yan. And then using Shaman Atene is going to bring back Taiye. Taiye makes the tokens. And Long Yang is going to obviously pop off here. I just thought this was really funny. Like, it reminds me of, like, uh, if you guys were watching um, one of my few past videos with Crawlers, where. I had to try and find a very unique way of getting around Psychic and the uh, Punisher or whatever. Uh, this just kind of reminds me. Just a unique way of getting around 
uh, a card that otherwise you can't really beat because he can't. He has zero outs to the Crooked Cook. Um, we don't know if this guy's running Exodi or anything like that. Uh, but I always, I always find these Crooked Cook builds like really like lame to begin with. They're kind of like very silly in my opinion. Because in my opinion, it's just like, why bother even playing the game if you're just going to play a card pass every turn? I don't know. Like, he sees this happening to him, right? And this guy just continuously just like, like, oh, okay, well. Oh, well. You know? Like, it's, it's kind of bizarre to me. It's bizarre to me how he just like just continuously kept passing seeing that like this was eventually going to happen and just did nothing to do it do against it I, I i just find that like extremely bizarre but i hope you guys enjoyed that that's game number three and it was a funny one hello everybody this is game number two of the week and i will say i know you guys love rika right and one controller has actually uh, been in the top five before. Uh, re repeat member here. Uh, he ends up playing against heroes. And the heroes deck actually makes probably one of the most ideal hero boards you can ever make with this. Uh, we're going to actually see going through the motions as all these cards. Goes into extra. That's going to bring that. Boom. Sets up another malicious. Grabs Plasma. Plasma's huge. So Plasma's like actually like a scary card to play against for a lot of decks. It's going to banish. A lot, lot of triggers on the stack here. There we go. EM, e call. Grab a spirit. That's the win combat trades. We got this. Boom. We got DPE. Ah, oh, this is a gross board. And tribute. So this man's got to play through a DPE, plasma, and absolute zero. Kind of crazy. Well, he's going to evenly. But like I said, Evenly's not even that strong. Like it's not even that like it looked it looked really good, but he really only got rid of like he got rid of three cards because DPE does save like he gets to saves one it pretty much saves himself. So he still has to deal with DPE, he still has to deal. So this was actually a huge mistake mistake by the hero player. I think once he took plasma. I 100% believe the right play was using triple tactics to take it back. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. But, like, dude, like, in this position, you actually can't even play the game. Like, you, I guess you have to, like, kill your own plasma, maybe? I don't, I don't even know. No, nothing here feels good. But your plasma is negating everything. You know what I mean? So even if you draw the cards, like, you can't actually play the game. So you get your plasma back, but kind of ruined your entire turn regardless. He goes into Sun Avalon. This guy's going to max C. We're going to see an Ash coming out. He's going to DPE. Plays Rika Pedal and Trap and Pass. Honestly, when I first seen this, was watching this replay before I chose it. I seen the evenly in his hand. I was thinking, I was like, oh, this is going to be a lame, le this is going to be an annoying replay. Like, it's not even going to be that very good. But, um, then you actually start watching, uh, actually what happens. And this is a pretty, like, it does not look like he's going to do anything here. Add Riki, Fairy. Fairy's going to add the field spell. So the field spell is huge for them to get off. This is massive. He just got rid of DPE. Riki Fairy Princess. Now we go into Strena. We're going to grab Sheet and then set Sheet. Ooh, negate. That's delicious. Kill Plasma. Don't have to worry about Plasma anymore. Now I see one controller in control. Fusion Destiny. 
a really annoying card to come out, but he goes into dangerous. Not a big deal. We're gonna tribute. I steal his uh, other card, and we're, we're sitting pretty here. This threat is going hard right now. Just gonna add Riki Fairy again. Yeah, like at this point, like if you're the hero player, you probably just concede. Like I, I just don't see you winning. Strand is gonna summon Hyperion. I think that's what they go into, right? Yeah, Sacred P Hyperion. And he goes two eights. Boom, here comes Teardrop. It's gonna activate Tribute. I think he should have held this. Uh, because he does like you knew he had spirit in hand, so I feel like he definitely held held this. But everyone like, you know, you forget about things certain times. And sometimes people don't even know. Like, I, I wasn't even very familiar with this card too much, to be honest. So. Still very clean gameplay by him. Really good at navigating and coming out with a win. Plus, he was going second. And I feel like it's, like, another... This deck doesn't really want to be going for second, I would assume. But he does have the Dark Ruler. So maybe, maybe he's a little more fine than I actually think. But my goodness, that is a fantastic game number two. Hello, everybody. We're here with the top play of the week. And this one is actually more of just it being funny. I just realized this guy's name is Slimzoid TTV. Come on. Come on. Come on, guys. <laughs> so this is Fortunato. This guy's in our community. Um... So this is, uh, this was like, I was actually talking to him, I actually, I talked to him about this game. So this was was his first misplay, going into Deer Note. What he should have gone into is, uh, the fusion, and then he should have fusion summoned and then went into Deer Note. Because now he's not going to be able to set up the, uh, Amazing Dragon play on his, his opponent's turn. Uh, he also loses out on a draw from this card. So that's another no, another reason why. So Zayami is going to boost. He's going to special summon Foxy Tune, which is fine. Again, adds Ghost Ogre. Fine. Again, draws a card. He top decks Madam Spider. Huge top deck, first of all. Very lucky. Uh, he's going to grab Trap. And then he's actually going to go into Hope Harbinger, which is a fine. It's fine. But he could have ended on a much better board if he played it correctly. But I just thought these were all hilarious. So this man that gets... So so Fortunato gets lightning stormed, right? <laughs> he gets lightning stormed, and he calls monsters. So he could hope harbinger this. He could negate this, right? His reasoning for that was, I'm playing around triple tactics. I'm like, you think he has triple tactics? He's like, yeah, I do. I'm like what? Give, like he, he and then, then there's not a very good answer for why he thinks it. He says I have it in my hand. Everyone's playing it, so he definitely has triple tactics. Like okay, so he lets his hope harbinger die, and then this man casts branded fusion. Goes into Albion. Okay, okay, whatever. And then he activates infinite imperm. Okay. This man calls cross out. He calls Chaos Space because he doesn't have Imperm. Okay. Must have forgotten what his deck list was. Happens to the best of us. And then he's going to pop the Albion, which again, I don't know about that play. Uh, because if you guys know Albion has a graveyard effect, at the end of the turn he's going to be able to either set Brandon in red or get another Brandon Fusion. So, kind of a yikes. Uh, he grabs a Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon Hawk, so he's gonna be able to set, should be able to summon a Colossal here, right? So he goes into Colossus, and he's going to set, oh, he just adds Brandon Fusion to his hand, which, he could have just let this card die, like, like, I'm being honest, like, what is he searching with this? I don't know, I don't know, I'm not 100% sure here, but he's actually gonna, gonna special summon Ogre Dance. Goes into Amazing Punk Dragon. Now, there is, there is the option, also, I just want to point out. He bounces the Thunder Dragon Colossal, which I think is fine. But there is the option, too, that he could have um, 
not used the first effect and he could have saved and used the secondary effect to resurrect someone in the graveyard. I think this is fine though. I think this is a fine play here. Attack. It's just, this is very boring. Like, like I don't even understand what's happening right now. Okay, here's the second, this is the second thing that I talked to him about. He put, like, he plays Fallen of Albaz, right? <laughs> and activates its effect. He discards this, right? Uh, he could have just Ghost Ogred this, right? And just, this would never have gotten Fallen of Albaz. But now, he leads himself to actually just dying here. But for some reason, the opponent just did not... For some reason, the opponent didn't use the Branded Fusion. And you know what that tells me? That tells me he doesn't have another... He doesn't have another, uh... Fallen of Albaz in his deck. Which is bizarre, right? Like, he went through both his Fallen of Albazes at this point. So the few, few, the brand of fusion's dead. So he got extreme. I feel like Fortunato got extremely lucky here. But yeah, he doesn't ghost ogre it either. So right now he, I just want to point this out. He said this was all. He was telling me this was all planned, and I want to point this out. If he did not top deck this punk card right here, he a hundred percent loses this duel. Because he needed the special summon, so he would activate he would activate this immediately for some re bizarre reason. And then he gets triple tactics. The card that he was playing around was actually the card he was gonna use. Uh, and then the funniest thing about this game is I had I had Fortunato on stream show me the guy's deck list, and the guy doesn't even play triple tactics. So remember, guys. Uh, when you're out there in the dueling field uh, and you're, you're playing ranked, sometimes your opponent just don't got it, okay? Don't play around every card because sometimes they just don't have it. You, you still have to do the best lines of play. But I just thought that was a really funny match, and I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you guys want to submit your own replay, I would say go down to the link down below, join the Discord, and in the Discord there is a submit dual replay section. Just go there and you have to send a picture. You don't really have to send a picture. Just mainly send your ID, your Konami ID. Because uh, I need to look you up, obviously. Make sure that the duel is public so I can view it. And I will view the video. I obviously view the, the duels. So And then I make the decision on the cut. So, uh, yeah. All, that's all you have to do. And maybe you guys can be featured in the next video. Okay, goodbye.